Hello, I am Isaac, and today we shall be solving the BECE, that's Junior YAC, Mathematics Past Questions for 2020. These are theory questions set in 2020 by BECE examination body. When you see questions like this, how do you go about them? In this class, I will solve the questions, analyze them the way you will understand. Now, don't fail to subscribe to this channel because there are more videos you will find very, very helpful. Solve 3 over 4 equals 2 over 3s plus 1 minus 1 over 4. This is an equation. There is difference between equation and expression. When you are given values separated by equal to, we call that equations. Now, when there is no equal to, let's say only, only this part, we call that expression. When you come across questions like this, how do you go about them do you get scared or you just give up as someone writing a bece there is this chance or this fear immediately you see a mathematics question how can i solve this well it's too much how do i break this down so that fear is what makes many persons uh, many persons fail not actually the questions when you see questions mathematics questions or questions from other subjects Accept it in good faith. Okay, wow. This is another day in business. So, let's see the question. Secondly, don't see the questions as a whole. That will increase your fear. No. No matter how long the questions are or the question is, don't see it as a whole. See it as a bit. You break it down. Read it step by step. This, we have 3 over 4. Equals 2 all over them. Uh, 3s plus 1 minus 1 over 4. This is a fraction. This is a fraction. This is a fraction. Now, in this, the uh, denominator has s. This, there is no s. This, there is no s. To solve this question, you can start it in different ways. You can choose to collect like them in the sense that the, denom uh, the denominator of this one doesn't have s. The denominator of this doesn't have s. This is a proper fraction because the up, which is numerator, is smaller than the bottom, which is the denominator. This is also a proper fraction. But when you have something like this, 4 over 3, it is improper because the top, the numerator, is bigger than the bottom. In that case, we say you are carrying something that is bigger than you. Why, if you have something like this, two whole number, four over three, this is a missed fraction. Whole number and fraction. Now, to resolve missed fraction, you simply say this times this plus this all over this. That is how you change missed fractions to improper fractions. So, in this case, this is the same thing as three times two is six. Uh, six plus four, ten. So, this is ten over three. So, missed, improper. Now, how do we change from improper back to miss? We simply say 10 divided by 3. They will share 2. Sharing it to, that is 6 is being taken. Remaining 4. So, that remainder will be here for over the denominator, which remains. That is the conversion method. So, since this one, the denominator has a S, so I can choose to bring this one this way so that we solve this alone. So let me solve this in two ways. First, I'll simply say 3 over 4. This is minus 1 over 4. The minus is affecting 1 over 4 alone. So as it crosses the equality sign this way, it becomes positive. Making it plus 1 over 4 equals 2, 3, S plus 
after this step, we can choose to break down uh, this denominator, simplify the denominator. Then we also simplify here, looking for the LCM. Alternatively, you can start by saying 3 over 4 is equals 2 over. You open up this bracket. Now, board mass should not come to your mind in this type of questions because board mass is mainly effective when addiction or subtraction is meet with multiplication or division. So when we are solving questions that require board mass properly, I will let you know. So opening up these brackets, you use theory to multiply each of the values inside. 3 times s is 3s, then 3 times 1 is 3, that is plus 3, minus 1 over 4. So you can choose to get to this step before collecting like terms. But I choose to do it here. The LCM of 4 and 4 is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Plus 1 rather. So equals 2 whole number. Then 3. 3 times S is 3S. Minus plus 3 times 1 is 3. So we've simplified this. 3 plus 1 is 4. So here we have 4 over 4 is equals to 3s plus 3. 4 over 4 is 1. So 1 is equals to 3s plus 3. Since this is a fraction, let's put this in form of fraction. 1 over 1. After this step, we can simply do what we call cross multiplication. You do something like this. So we use this to multiply this, we use this to multiply this. So it is very valid. So 1 times 3s plus 3 is equals 2 times 1. So 1 times anything, that value remains. So now we have a simpler value. We still collect like term here. 3 has s, 3s, but there is no s in or uh, this other 3. So we take this to meet 2. It is positive here. As it crosses, it becomes negative. Now, this leads to something you should be very careful about. 2 minus 3. 2 is smaller. So when you are doing minus, check the first one. Is it smaller? If it is smaller and you are saying minus 3, it means you have 2. And you are removing 3. You can't. So this is like saying... You have 2 and you are owing 3. You just have to give out the 2 you have. You still be owing 1. So 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So uh, 3s is equals minus 1. We are looking for the value of s, not 3s. So to get s alone, we divide 3s by 3. That will give us s. But in an equation, what happens to this side should happen to the other side. This is what makes the equation balanced. Because if you are dividing only this by 3, s is no longer equals minus 1. But if you say here over 3, then 3s over 3 is equals minus 1 over 3. So s is equals minus 1 over 3. In uh, B, it says the linear scale factor of two similar shapes is 4 ratio 3. If the area of the bigger shape is 490 centimeter squared. What is the area of the smaller shape? So everything here equals 10 max. This is a ratio question. 4 ratio 7. Now we are giving some things in mathematics. Some grammar should not even bother you because you will you waste, you be wasting time thinking of what is linear scale factor? What is linear scale factor? What is this similar shape again? That's not your business. So whether you know it or you don't know it, you know that we have shape. Shape can be anything. Since there is ratio, it means it's something, something. Since it's uh, 4 ratio 7, it means after sharing something or the factor or anything, that's how you interpret it in your mind if you don't know the meaning of the stuff. So I'm putting my leg in your shoe solving this question. So it was shared. So this one takes 7, this one takes 4. So this is the bigger, uh, smaller share. This is the bigger one. That is the bigger ratio. So if it's in 4 ratio 7, what is the total ratio? 
The total ratio will simply be uh, 4 plus 7, which is 11. That is the total ratio. So out of 11, this guy is taking 4, this guy is taking 7. Now they said, if the area of the bigger shape is 490 centimeter squared, what is the area of the smaller shape? The bigger shape will simply be the one with the ratio of 7, right? So this means the uh, 7 over the total ratio is 11 of the shape, the size is equals 490 centimeter squared. We've interpreted the question. The linear scale factor of two similar shapes is 4 ratio 7. If the area of the bigger shape is 490 centimeter squared, what is the area of the smaller shape? So the total area is here. So we can change size to area. So the uh, 7 over 11 of the total area is 490 centimeter squared. Because they said the bigger, the bigger one is carrying 7, the smaller one is carrying 4. So 7 over 11 of the big total area, the area of the smaller shape plus the area of the uh, big shape is equals 490 centimeter squared. And in mathematics, of speaks of multiplication. This means 7 over 11 of the total area, let's represent it with A, is equals 490. So this means uh, 7 A over 11 is equals 490. 7 A times A. So this is something as A over 1. 7 times A, 7 A. 11 times 1, 11, 490. So this is something as over 1. Remember how we cross, uh, cross multiplied in the first question. So in that case, here will give us 7a times 1 is equals 490 times 11. So 7a is equals 490, 11. 1 times 0, 0. 1 times 9, 9. 1 times 4, 4. 1 times 0, 0. 1 times 9, 9. 1 times 4, 4. 0, 9. 13, remainder, 1. 4 plus the one we carried, 5. So that will give you 7 is equals 5390. So we are looking for A now. That is the total area, the area of the full shape. It will simply be dividing both sides by 7. So A is equals. So area is 770 centimeters squared. So this is the initial total area of the shape. Now, if the bigger one is 490 centimeter square, the smaller one will simply be uh, 770 centimeter square minus 490 centimeter square. Or you can uh, the smaller one will be 4 over 11 of the total shape times 770. So any method you apply, you get the same answer. And you can in mathematics, mass is formed. You can do the reverse. So you can change the question to if the area of the smaller shape is 280 centimeters square, what is the area of the bigger shape? So you can solve from here, put 280 uh, here. So 4 over 11 is equals 280. From there, you still get the total area to be 770. They still get the uh, bigger shape to be 490 centimeters squared. So let's see the next question. A motorcycle uses 15 liters of fuel for a journey of 15 kilo. Meter. So we can do this um, 15 liters for a journey of 75 kilometer. I can even start analyzing from here. If 15 liters will take him uh, a journey of 70, 75 kilometer, then one liter, one liter will take him, let's say, S. S will simply be cross multiply. So S will be S. 15 times S will simply be 75 times 1. So S is equals 15 S is equals 75. S is equals 75 over 15. So kilometer. This is equals of 5 kilometer. So we've solved that one liter we take a person a distance of 5 kilometer. So this is the analysis and it may help us in answering the questions.
Okay, the first one says, what distance will 40 liters cover by the same motorcycle? <laughs> this is simple. If one liter, like we solved, one liter covers five kilometers. So uh, 40 liters will simply cover 40 times five kilometers. Since one liter covers five kilometers. So this is simply 40, five, zero, five times four, five, 10, 15, 20. So that equals uh, 200 kilometers. That is what a uh, 40 liters we cover. The second one says, how many liters will be needed for a distance of 350 kilometers? If five, uh, 15 liters takes 75 kilometers, one kilometer will simply cover, let's say, S liters. One kilometer will take S liters, which means S liters will be equals 15 over 75. That should be 1 over 5. Which means uh, 1 kilometer, we need 1 over 5 liter. 1 kilometer, we need 1 over 5 liter. If one kilometer we need one over five liter, that simply implies that um, 350 kilometer we need one over five times 350. Construct angle PQR. This already suggests that we are dealing with a triangle because it has three sides. So they said that PQR is seven centimeter. Q arrow means a uh, distance from Q to arrow. P arrow is 8 centi eight centimeter. This simply means from P to arrow is 8 centimeter. Why? The set angle. So angle P Q arrow is 60 degrees. Now, when you are given angles in the triangle, something like this, the angle will simply be in this Q. This means here, this should be Q. So the angle will be here. We are told that the angle is 60 degrees. So what you simply do is construct angle 60 degrees here. How do you construct angle 60 degrees? This is what you do. You take your uh, compass. This is it, right? Draw a mark here, or you can use a ruler. After doing that, put the tip here, okay? Here. Cut here. Okay? Now, don't change it. Maintain the same distance. Put the tip in this place. Or, you can do something like this. Like this, okay? Then you put here. Put it here. You do something like this. After that, you pick a ruler. From this first one you drew, you do something like this. You see? So this is uh, 60 degrees. Now, call, you can call here P, Q, call here R. These are the sides. So you are told that Q, R is 7 centimeters. This means from Q to here, this is 7 cm. P arrow is 8 cm. 8 cm. So we are given the angle. So I think that is all we need for that. Wow! With this, we can start 2020 BECE Mathematics Theory. I hope you found this class helpful. Have a nice day. See you on the next one.